First up, the Allen Edmonds Higgins Mill Brown Chrome XL Standard non-waterproof boot. I purchased this boot for $250 way back in 2016. It has been re-heeled once, it has been resold once, the boot is still going strong. An absolutely amazing boot and quite possibly the best shoe purchase that I've made of all time. Likes about this boot. Well, it's the perfect mixture and it sits right in the middle of a super dressy work boot and a super casual, rugged, workwear inspired boot. The shape is wide, the toe box is not big and bulbous right there. You could definitely tell it's not as sleek as a dress shoe or a dress boot, but it is by no means bulky. You can definitely dress this one up all the way up to a casual suit. It maintains that shine, no problem. That brown Chrome XL leather really does look quite a bit more formal and quite a bit more refined than something, let's say, like the Red Wing Iron Ranger or the Wolverine 1000 Mile. And with that day-night rubber outsole, you get awesome weather resistance, awesome traction, and also the shoe doesn't look like it's super bulky down here, like a big bulky hiking shoe. Now this boot is also super comfortable. About two or three years after I purchased the Higgins Mill, I ended up spending a full day for Thanksgiving with my then girlfriend, now wife, and we walked around the Long Island City area of Queens, and then we took the train down to Greenpoint, Brooklyn, just to have Thanksgiving dinner with our families. At the end of the day, I clocked walking 10 miles in this boot, and my feet were feeling actually pretty good. The heel could have been a little bit better, but overall, nine out of 10, as far as comfort goes, my feet were feeling absolutely awesome. Dislikes about this boot. Well, the boot tends to run very, very hot. My first winter, I was wearing them a lot since I had a job as an IT field engineer in New York City, in Manhattan. So I was wearing these, walking around in the rain, in the snow, in the super cold weather. But every time I got back to my office, my feet would overheat to the point where I actually started to take the boots off if I knew that I was gonna sit there for longer than, let's say, 10 or 20 minutes. And this wasn't even with super warm wool socks. I was wearing basic cotton bomba socks at the time. And that really had me questioning wearing them in the fall or the spring. They pretty much were only a winter boot since they ran so hot for me. Now, while they are very comfortable, the boots are still pretty heavy and they don't have a lot of heel cushions. So anytime I was walking more than five miles, my heels would get a bit sore. That Thanksgiving day where I walked 10 miles, I wasn't just walking 10 miles straight. I would walk half a mile, sit down, walk a mile, sit down. We were just spending all day outside walking, sitting at a cafe, walking, sitting to get lunch. But even at the end of the day, my heels did start to feel just a little bit sore. So while they were mostly comfortable, if I had a day where I knew I'd be walking nonstop, I would hesitate to put these on over something else. So if you don't have a car, you live in a city, or you do all of your errands on foot, just beware you make it a sore heel if you wear a boot like this. Finally, that Chrome XL leather. While it doesn't require any maintenance, it stays shined up, you don't really have to condition it that much, it does wrinkle pretty severely. That's the characteristics of the Chrome XL leather. However, I don't really like when I have super deep set wrinkles in my shoes or boots. Here is this one. The left one, a little bit better for some reason. This actually is pretty acceptable, but the one I showed you on the right, it's just a little bit too wrinkly for me. And that just means that this boot can't be dressed up as formally as if it had some nicer leather and it wasn't wrinkled so deeply. And I have a sneaking suspicion that that Chrome XL leather is the reason why these boots are so hot. They're great for super cold days, but they're not good for early fall or late spring. So they're more of a one season boot, not a three season boot, which I would prefer them to be. The next boot that I purchased, the Allen Edmonds Dalton Wingtip Dress Boot in dark chili. Now, I bought these boots in 2018, a couple of years after the Higgins Mill, so these have been with me for a while as well. Never resold or rehealed them, but as you could see, because they have that leather sole, I just put a cheap layer of rubber over here and I just cut it to size and sanded it to size. Definitely makes them a lot easier to wear if it's raining or if the weather takes a turn for the worse. Likes about this boot? Well, it's a dark chili wingtip, which is my favorite color and my favorite design for dress shoes. Hands down, this is the most comfortable dress shoe or dress boot from Allen Edmonds or any other manufacturers that I've ever tried. I'm talking Rockport, I'm talking Cole Haan dress shoes, not hybrid shoes. I'm talking Clarks, I'm talking Echoes, I'm talking, I don't really know too many shoes except those couple of brands. This is by far the most comfortable boot that I've ever worn. A lot of that comfort comes down to that double leather sole. It is a butyl infused leather sole. That way it is a bit more weather resistant and that double sole just gives a nice natural 
cushioning and it also molds to your foot really nicely so these things i could walk forever in them no issues at all the heel is also a lot lower than the higgins mill so it doesn't heel strike as bad meaning my heels don't get as sore when wearing these as opposed to the higgins mill no speed hooks on top just means it is a very clean design you can definitely wear this all the way up to a pretty formal suit the only reason why you wouldn't be able to dress it super formally is because it is not black it is brown but if you got something like this in black you can pretty much go 99 percent of where a all black oxford could get you in other words if you have a couple of dress shoes that you don't wear because they're uncomfortable something like this can replace all of them that way you're going to have the same look of a dress shoe with that nice sleek toe box but you're going to get a super comfortable shoe you're not going to have to change into sneakers or you're not going to have to be thinking about if you get caught walking for a long time you're actually going to have your feet start to be hurting you or bothering you. They're also a calfskin leather, meaning that they don't get deep creases like the Chrome XL on the Higgins Mill. You could see these creases are almost non-existent. This is something that I really like, and this is what you get when you pay a lot more money for nicer leather dress shoes or boots. Just makes the boot look high quality, and it helps with the formality of the boot. They also fit a lot better when compared to my Allen Edmonds McAllister's on the 65 Blast. This one being a boot means that you can cinch it down nice and tight around your ankle, but you still have a lot more room up here, whereas the Oxford shoes with their closed lacing systems, it just gets pretty hard to cinch it down because you can start to get a lot of pain on the top of your foot, but then if it's too narrow up here, it's a lot harder to get a good fit with Oxford, whereas a boot can be a lot more forgiving. Dislikes about this boot. It's only a couple. First one, that pull tab right here, it is constantly getting caught on my jeans or any of the pants that I'm wearing and I'm constantly having to adjust it. I wish I could just cut it off or super glue it right there, crazy glue it. That way it doesn't get caught. I do use this loop when I'm putting the shoes on. However, the boots are so soft and broken in that I don't need the loop anymore. And while they do fit better than an Oxford from Allen Edmonds, they still run a bit narrow right here. I had to jam a shoe stretcher in here, which was not easy because the boot is so high and I had to just put a little bit of a stretch up here definitely took care of all the discomforts I had but it would be nice if they just made them a little bit wider finally the worst dislike about this shoe is Alan Edmonds and their infinite wisdom decided to discontinue it I don't know why they did this because it's such an awesome boot but unfortunately that's the way life goes sometimes hopefully they'll bring it back someday or they'll come out with something much better that's not going to cost twice the price so if you have a pair of these wear them and enjoy them and if you don't can't get them anymore next up the Higgins Mill weatherproof boot from Allen Edmonds. I bought this boot back in 2019. I wanted to have something that was actually going to keep my feet dry, like guaranteed to keep my feet dry without having to go wear my pair of Echoes that I still have or my LL Bean boots that I was kind of tired of. Since I already had such a good experience with the standard non-waterproof Higgins Mills, these were pretty much a short thing. Likes about this boot. Well, a lot of the things about the standard Higgins Mill do carry over with this boot. So the formality level is perfectly in the middle. They're not super big and bulky work boots that you can't dress up, but they're also not super dainty dress boots that start to look weird if you wear them with anything other than a suit. Color on these is also a bit of a slightly darker brown, a little bit less 3D, which some people don't like. I actually find that the darker brown color on these allows you to dress them up just a little bit more than the standard Higgins Mill. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but here's the standard Higgins Mill. Here's the waterproof one. The standard one does have a bit more of a characteristic to it, whereas the waterproof or whatever you want to call it, the weatherproof one just has a bit more of a one-dimensional a little bit more of a plain looking leather. Now you may prefer one look over the other. It's entirely personal preference. However, you can dress up the weatherproof ones just a little bit more. And of course they are weatherproof, meaning that if it's raining, if it's snowing, if the weather is really bad, you don't have to revert to wearing your bean boots or your waterproof hiking boots. You can still wear a very stylish boot that can be dressed up while keeping your feet super dry. Comfort on these boots is about the same as the standard ones, nine out of 10, but something that also says these apart and it doesn't make sense to me however it's just the way it is these don't run as hot as the standard Higgins Mill. And that may seem surprising to a lot of you. It was surprising to me as well. But I find that I can wear these 
earlier in the fall and I can wear them deeper into spring. I wore these in 65 degree weather. My feet did get a little bit warm. I could never ever wear the standard Higgins Mills in anything above 50 degrees Fahrenheit since my feet would just overheat like crazy. So when it comes to seasonality and keeping your feet dry in inclement weather, the weatherproof version of the Higgins Mill is the more versatile option than the standard Chrome XL version. Dislikes, well number one, the leather seems to be of worse quality than the standard Higgins Mill. Here is the standard Higgins Mill. You can see it does have some wrinkles, but here is the weatherproof one. And it just seems like the weatherproof one wrinkles a little bit more. If we take a look at the side panel right there on the boot, the leather just wrinkles like crazy on these. Whereas in the standard Chrome XL boots, you don't get as crazy of wrinkling. Now this could be down to the whole rumor of the quality of Allen Edmonds is not the same, which may be true, may not be true. I don't particularly love playing into those things just because when I was growing up, when I was out of college, I had a lot of people telling me about the good old days, the good old days. My take on the good old days is they're gone, they're in the past. If the quality of Allen Edmonds has changed, then just go ahead and buy something entirely different. That way you can find your good old days in the future rather than looking in the past that's gone forever and wishing that you'd go back. But since they are the weatherproof leather, it could just be a different cut of leather or it could be a different, I don't know, grade of leather. But it is a shame since the price has gone up over the years and the leather seems to be like it's wrinkling and it's lacking quality that it used to have eight years ago. As always, thanks for watching.